Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Derek, and back for the next episode of the 30-day Facebook Live Challenge. I should have looked. I think we're on episode 10. Honestly, it's been a blur. I've uh, been really enjoying it. And tonight, for whatever reason, technology hates me. So uh, hopefully we go without a hitch here tonight, but I tried to do this like two hours ago, and I kept running into problems. Um, I use – so in my last – in the last live I did, I showed you guys my, it was in my bag. Well, not the very last one, but when I was at my parents' house and I was like, hey, here's my microphone and my interface. Well, I just got this one. It's pretty sweet uh, by Focusrite. And I use this to plug in my microphone here-ish. And then it goes into my computer so we get good audio and all that fun stuff. Right now I'm using the old one. I probably shouldn't even touch it, but I'm going to. This cool M-Audio interface it was like thirty dollars it was a you know goodbye right so it goes into the usb port and then i have this microphone Ta -da. Fun stuff. Ooh, man, computer computer's working hard tonight anyway so that's my setup right here going into the laptop <clears throat> anyway all that to say like nothing was working right and i don't know but now it, now it's happy about life so we can do this thing so um what else is i going to tell you oh yeah i went to buy some stuff on the apple store and my card kept getting declined and there's money in the bank, like not an issue, but for whatever reason, like all day long, it wouldn't work, wouldn't work, wouldn't work. I was trying to do an app update for something else I was going to do tonight for this. So I don't know what the deal is there. I finally gave up on that. So we'll check in on that in the morning. But do you guys ever have days where you just feel like maybe you shouldn't have got out of bed <laughs> or at least with technology, like everything hates you. Uh, I feel like that happens to me all the, well, not all the time, but when it does, one thing that helps keep me on track is, uh, I will, and I should probably take a couple steps back. First little rant story here, and then we're going to get into a tutorial. But uh, anyway, what I do to try and keep me on track is I like to make uh, notes, and I like to use this size piece of paper because it's about the right size. And what I'll do is rather than letting technology distract me or derail me from what I'm trying to get done, I will actually write down what I'm trying to achieve. So for example, let's say I'm going to make a new banner image for a website or maybe something a little more complicated like an interactive web banner where there's some sliding things and whatever else. I'll actually go through line by line and I will write down very detailed the exact steps that it takes to do that. Everything from like find the image, cut out the image, upload into you know Photoshop or you know export from Photoshop, upload to the website, all the different steps that it takes because that way when I either get distracted from coworkers or family members or in this case technology breaking or a computer shutting down on you or something weird happening, you can go back and see exactly where you left off and hopefully not lose as much time trying to figure things out. So in this case, uh, things weren't working and I was getting frustrated so I just decided to push pause and I went and went to the gas station and filled up the car and uh, took a quick walk, came back, and everything worked. Don't know why, but hey. So uh, anyway, just, just wanted to relate that uh, when things kind of go sideways, having that list has been really valuable for me. So anyway, that's my rant for the night. But what we're going to do is I want to jump into a quick tutorial tonight. So a couple episodes ago, I gave you guys a quick tour of my office space. And uh, it, I was doing a photo shoot and all that kind of stuff. So what I want to do is show you the images I got from that and then how I process those for the website. So let's go ahead and dive in. So, all right. <clears throat> so these are the images that I got from that photo shoot. Very, very basic, you know, on white, white background. And you'll notice not all of these, like the background themselves are not true, uh, truly white around the edges. So I'm gonna show you some ways that we edit these. But these are all to add the new apparel onto the website. So. Um, let's see, just a bunch here. So this is the sales team at Falcor. Good people, fun people. Um, anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to go through and I'm going to edit a couple of these photos and just show you a couple tips and tricks and then how I eventually get them onto, in this case, the website. So these are all the t-shirts. You can go there and buy them right now. Hey, who is that? That is my wife. Look at that. Um, <laughs> sorry. Wow. It's going to be one of those nights. I can feel it already. Anyway, all right, so how, so if you look at this, you'll notice that the edges are perfectly white, right? They don't, if, if I were to drop in one of these other images, they would be gray, and I wanted it to be perfectly white so you couldn't see the boundary of the image. So what we're going to do is I'm going to jump back into Lightroom, and the way that I got these images, or the way that I brought them in, I went up to File, and I go down to Tethered Capture, and then Start Tethered Capture. 
So what that does, I have my computer with that tethers tool. Uh, let me pull that up real quick, actually. Man, and I can hear my computer just taking off tonight. I don't know what the deal is. So if you go to tethertools.com, you can buy all of these awesome cables for your computer, or sorry, well, for your computer and your, your camera. And they've got different versions, whether you're shooting with Nikon or Canon or Sony or whatever else. And they also have some other really cool accessories you should definitely check out. But uh, basically what I'm using is the 15-foot Tether Tools cable. And you can select your manufacturer and the type that you're looking for. And uh, that's it. That's basically what I plug into my camera and then into the computer. So once those are both plugged in, I've got the camera turned on. I will jump back into... Uh, up here we'll go to file down to tethered capture and then start tethered capture and then when that opens up I can give it a session name which you can name it whatever you want you can rename the file so when they come in it makes sense so you might do the session name or you might do just the file name from the camera or give it a date or a custom name whatever you want and then you tell it where to save all those images and you can add metadata or keywords as you take each photo and click OK and it'll open up this little camera bar thing. So I can actually set my camera settings and I can click on the button here to fire the camera. So what's nice about that is I can put the camera on a tripod and I can, I can push the shutter button from here to capture that image without any camera shake. So whenever you take a picture with your camera, you know, your finger pressing the button, there's gonna be a little bit of a camera shake. You just can't help it that there's gonna be camera movement, even if your shutter is really fast. So this is a great way to take the photo. Now, in this case, I was doing all of these handheld, and then that way when I took the photo, it would immediately come into my computer, and then my computer was connected with an HDMI cable to the TV on the wall. If you go watch that tour again, you'll see what I'm talking about. And basically, that's how we did this photo shoot. So now we're back in Lightroom, and it's time to actually edit these photos. All right, so uh, let's just jump in on I'm gonna start with this one because there's a couple things I wanna show you here. So usually what I'll do is I'll go through and I'll click on the develop tab up here on the image. And in this case, a majority of the edits I'm going to be doing will be in Photoshop uh, because there's some specific things I wanna do here. Now, if this was just a regular photo, I would actually click on the develop. By regular photo, I mean like an artistic photo or something where it's a landscape or maybe he's in a scene. In this case, it's a product photo, so I'm gonna do some different things with it. If it was like, a, like I said, like a, a portrait photo or a landscape or something, I would come into develop and I would actually scroll through all these options and update and, you know, kind of mess with exposures and highlights and shadows and clarity and all these settings where I would go through and kind of dial it in. In this case, I basically use Lightroom just to be able to do that tethered capture so I could get immediate feedback on the shots we were taking and have it broadcast to the television. So now that we're in here, what I want to do, if, if I just hit command E, I don't even, I think it's an edit edit in Photoshop maybe, let me look real quick. I don't even know, I just know the shortcut. So if I hit, um, let's just type in Photoshop. Okay, so it's under photo. So photo down to edit in and then Adobe Photoshop. So I just hit Command E is the shortcut for that. And it'll open it up in Photoshop. And so what I wanna do now is if I were to throw this right into, let me show you as an example. Let me just draw a regular white square. And you can see that although this background looks white, it truly is not pure white. So what would happen if I brought this image in as is into the website, the part of the website that is white would be pure white next to this and it would put a box around the image. And again, I don't want that box around the image. So there's a few things we can do. And right now, because we shot on white, the easiest is to use this new tool within Photoshop and it's the new select and mask tool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the letter W, which will open up my magic wand tool. And actually, I think by default, you'll see the quick selection tool. Doesn't matter, whatever, whichever one that comes up, you should see the select subject. Now this is a new tab, one of the recent updates I just did in Photoshop. This is an amazing, amazing uh, tool. If I just click that, Photoshop is smart enough to tell what the subject is of the photo and like a solid 80, almost 90% of the time, it gets a perfect selection. So if I zoom in on this, it might be difficult to see on this live cast, but the selection is just about spot on. There's a few things that kind of missed here, but because I've got that quick selection tool, I can add that to the selection or remove it depending on which way it 
kind of erred a little bit, but again, for the most part, for being able to like click a button and it guessed it right. I mean, this is amazing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, now that I have a selection around the subject, I'm going to click select and mask. And this is also an update that you guys have seen in the video I updated in uh, the graphic design bootcamp, but um, it's, it's come even further. It's a lot better now. So what I'm going to do is uh, in this case, he's got a little bit of facial hair down here and it did a pretty good job, but I'm going to click over here on this brush that's called um, the refined edge brush tool. It's the second one down. And again, I don't know if you guys can see this on this tutorial. I might have to do a separate one on the YouTube channel um, where I can zoom in and stuff. But basically I'm just kind of painting around the edge of that, of his chin and the hair to kind of make a better selection or anywhere I see white kind of bleeding through to clean that up. And I mean, that's basically it. So for not having, you know, for basically pushing a button, this selection is almost flawless. And I don't need it to be super perfect. I'm I'm putting it onto another white background. It's not like I'm trying to put them into another scene. So in this case, the selection is more than adequate. I'll just click OK down here in the bottom right. And then what I do, let me open up the other, let me find it real quick. So I have a file that is, that is not the right one. There we go. All right, so this file is a thousand pixels wide by a thousand pixels tall. And I do that so all of our images are consistent. And when I have my layers palette out here, basically I bring in each image that I've already processed and I can say, I can hold down the alt key and click on each one of these one at a time to see what each image turned out to be. And I name each layer very specifically. So when I'm all done, I can batch export these in one shot. So let me uh, jump back into where we're at in the tutorial here. I'm gonna go back over to that image we just cut out. We have the selection here and I'm going to get the selection tool or the move tool with the letter V and I'm going to click and drag. Okay. What do we got going on here? The Photoshop's being weird. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to click and drag back into this uh, apparel file that I've got set up and I'm just going to hold down the shift key and then let go. And what that'll do is throw it right in the middle of the artboard. Hit Command T. Now in this case, my guides, my my uh, transform handles are way off the screen. So what I'm going to do is lock down here at the top, or down here at the top. Doesn't make any sense. Sorry, up here at the top, I've got this maintain aspect ratio chain link button. I'm going to click on that, and now I can scrub over the W or the H. So this is the width and the height of what we're transforming. So I can click and drag and scrub it to the left or the right, and that way it'll scale it down and keep it from uh, skewing because I've got that locked down. And then now I can see the, the, the handles and I can finish my transform there. So now that I've got it where I want it, I'm gonna hit the return key and you'll see it's transparent so I can see what's coming through below. So I'll make a new layer, bring it behind it. And I'm gonna hit Alt, well, if I hit the letter D, it'll bring in, it'll make sure I've got my default swatches. So I've got black in front and white behind. And I'm gonna hit Command Delete to fill that new layer we just made with the background color, which in this case is white. And now I can move him around, center him or put him wherever I want on this image. And now one thing I want to show you too. So in this image, he's kind of, uh, he's kind of leaning forward with his hips a little bit. So here's another cool trip, uh, tip that, I mean, it's kind of cool, but uh, you, know, you don't use it a ton, but in this case it came in real handy. I'm going to go to, um, edit down to puppet warp. And now it'll put a mesh over its image and then I can drop pins down here. And now I can come back and grab those pins and actually manipulate the image a little bit. So let's say his head leaning too far forward. I want to tip it back a little bit because I put a pin here in his neck and right about here in his chin, I can move, <laughs> I can get pretty extreme with it. Right. Uh, I hope I'm blowing your mind. This was so cool when I first discovered it. Anyway, maybe it's stupid, but for me, what it helped me do, and I can bring his chest forward just a little bit, just a little bit better posture. So nothing crazy. It's not like I'm, you know, manipulating, uh, his weight or his figure at all. It's more so just, um, in this case, he just happened to be kind of slouching when I took the shot. So I'm going to hit return and you can see the before, which was the original photo. Now the after where he's standing up a little bit straighter. So now that I've got that where I want it, I'm going to command click on the layer below. So I've got the transparent layer with him right there and then the white background. 
I'm going to hit Command E, as in Echo, to merge those together. And then uh, the next thing I want to do is, uh, you know what, I, I kind of skipped a step. I'll show you in another thing what I do. Actually, maybe I'll make this my tutorial on uh, YouTube. I use a cool plugin called Perfect Portrait, and it helps clean up the eyes, sharpen the eyes a little bit, and uh, remove blemishes on the face and stuff like that. But basically, this is pretty much the workflow that I did to get these images. So the last thing I would do would be to rename this layer. So I'm going to call it Falcor Men's Red Logo T. All right, so now that I've got all of these images processed and they're all in here ready to go, what I can do, and right now I've only got two layers visible, I can come up here to File, go down to Export, and I can export all my layers to files. So I can choose only the visible layers, and if I do it this way, only these two layers that have the eyeball turned on will actually export, or I can turn that off and it'll just do every single layer. And then I can give it a prefix. So the file name, if I did this now, it'd say 2018-falcor-apparel- and then whatever the name of the layer is. Or I can just turn that all off, take off the prefix, I can choose what kind of file type. In this case, I'll leave it as a JPEG, high quality. I'm going to browse where to put it. Let's throw it on my desktop, and I'll make a new folder. We'll call it Test Export. Whoops. Hit Open. I'll click Run. And now Photoshop is going to isolate each layer, save it as a JPEG, and then batch export every single layer. So it's already done. I'll click OK. I'll jump over into my desktop. And let's find that test export. And there are all of the images. Now, it still put a um, underscore and then like a file name in front of that name. So I don't know. I usually go through and I clean these up. Sometimes I'll hit return, delete that, and hit return again. So I've got the 10 key keyboard. And don't hit the enter key. I hit the return key to change names. So I'm hitting the one that's right above the shift key. So hit return hit return again. So this is kind of labor intensive if you're trying to rename rename that, but honestly, it's probably fine to leave it alone. But all that to say, so here is a file for each one of these images. And then when I get into the back end of the website, I can actually batch upload all this. So there's a there's a media upload section. If you guys have used WordPress at all, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. But what I can do is I can highlight all of these at one time and then click and drag the whole thing and just drop them all in there at one point. So that's kind of how I batch process all of these product images and things like that. So that's what I have for you guys tonight. I don't know if that blew your mind or if you already knew all that kind of cool stuff, but that's what I was working on today actually was getting all those products up on the website and that's part of my workflow. Uh, any questions? I don't know if I can see your questions from here. So let me grab my phone real quick while you guys think of something to ask and it'll be cool like that. I should have done this before. I'm sorry. But like I said, it was kind of a random technology hates me kind of a day. So it is what it is. There we go. Oh, um, all right. So Dustin Mack asks, turn my volume down. All right. Um, Okay, so the photos that we just processed, I took with a 5D Mark II studio camera tethered with Lightroom in, in that specific instance. A lot of times I just use this phone and that's because I can take all my photos, I can go into the photos app, select all the ones I want. And then because I'm on a Mac, I can do the airdrop. So it'll just immediately sync them to my downloads folder. Uh, that's typically how I work when it's something like a small um, a small product that you don't really need that depth perception or, or um, you know, the high, the really expensive glass for when you're doing portraits and stuff. And some of it's just a matter of the day. And if it's a, if it's a fire kind of a project where it needs to be done like yesterday, or if it's something I've got time to do, if I've got time, then I'll bust out the expensive DSLR and, you know, go that route. Um, but a lot of times I just shoot with my phone. So, uh, anyway, I hope that tutorial was helpful. That's how I process my images and that, that new select subject tab in Photoshop is killer. It's been, uh, uh, lifesaver for sure and helps speed up my workflow. So anyway, thanks for watching guys. Um, 
What templates do I use in WordPress? Okay, so Dustin, if you haven't checked out my uh, WordPress Blitz course, I go over all that in detail, but my favorite uh, WordPress template currently is the salient WordPress theme. It's uh, what we're running on this website, my personal website, and a handful of others. Oh my goodness, I can't type. All right, let me show you here. So uh, you can go to Theme Forest, you can pick that one up. Another one that's really good that I, I haven't had a lot of experience with yet, it's about 20 bucks more, but it was uh, it Divi, I think is what I was. There we go. Also a really cool theme if you're a graphic designer. Uh, a lot of developers don't like these because they're really, you know, they've got all kinds of coding behind it. They can be pretty bulky between the animations that they include and things like that. But what I really like about Divi and Salient uh, from a graphic design perspective is all the templates that are baked into it are really flexible and you can get some really stellar results with minimal effort. And then also as a designer, it allows you to um, design what you want it to be. And oh, I'm not making any sense, but basically like, I feel like I have full control as a graphic designer. I can design anything I want and bring it into these um, these grids, essentially these layouts, and, and it's going to look stellar. So those are the two that I highly recommend. I used X for quite a while. Um, let me see here, but lately they made a couple changes, and it's it's uh, I I mean it's it's a great it's a great theme. It's really good for if you're going to be handing off your theme to a client and they're gonna make updates. It, I feel like it's a little bit easier to use with their cornerstone editor. Um, but for me working with it personally, I feel like I get the best results with Divi or with Salient. Um, you can use it for selling stuff. You mean like, uh, Dustin, Dustin asked, you can use it for selling stuff. I'm assuming you mean like for an e-commerce template, is that what you're talking about? Um, and the answer to that is yes. So basically, what you would do, Salient has created styling for the WooCommerce plugin. So you basically install WordPress, put a theme on it, so Salient or Divi or X or whatever you wanna do, and then all those themes, they've taken the time to stylize all of the elements that come with WooCommerce. So you would install WooCommerce to basically power your store, and then you, know, you can dial in the settings with all of their theme options and stuff like that. So I hope that's helpful. Um, let me see. Let me see here. I'll pull something up for you guys. So um, I will I will link below. You guys can check out my, um, if you guys don't have access, you should have access. I'm pretty sure I sent an email, but if not, I'll give you guys a discount code for checking this out and you guys can get access to the WordPress Blitz, Web Design with WordPress course, whatever I called it, I don't remember. Anyway, um, it's a good course, it's pretty It's pretty straightforward, it helps you guys with WordPress and shows you how I do things. And those, those sites that I build, I basically show you exactly how I do it. And those are sites that I've charged between $2,000 to $10,000 to, do, to deliver to clients. So uh, the, a lot of that, value comes from um, the, the, design, the design work and the development and the um, discovery, like discovering what a client really needs to put on the site. But basically the foundation for how to get there is all laid out for you. So definitely a cool, a cool course. And I will make sure you have access to that if you don't already. Any other questions before I wrap this up for the night? What do we got here? Anyway, um, and then I, you guys, I love your feedback. I love your questions. It helps me like as far as tonight, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to talk about. So uh, definitely you can help steer the ship a little bit by reaching out and let me know what you want to talk about or what things you're struggling with, uh, what is relevant to you, whether it's web design stuff, or print design stuff, or if it's software specific, like, you know, Illustrator or, or Lightroom or something like that. So uh, I will be working on some new tutorials. I think I mentioned this before. I mentioned this every time in the videos. I've got that new YouTube channel. Be sure to check that out. You can follow me on Instagram at dmitchelldesign. And again, these Facebook Lives, I've been enjoying this a ton. We're about, well, I guess we're about a third of the way through. And so definitely plenty of time left. If you guys have questions, be sure to ask them below, comment in, those, in the comments below, or even just post it on the Facebook group channel. Or if you're seeing this on YouTube, just comment below. I've, I'm checking those in the thread too now. So 
Uh, thanks, guys, for watching. I don't see any questions at the moment. Um, anyway, guys, appreciate you. Thanks for tuning in and excited to catch up with you again tomorrow. Have a great night. See ya.